So yesterday, I uploaded a video discussing PvP combat in DayZ.61. Today, we are going to be discussing player versus environment changes for people who are interested in other aspects of the game. The primary topic of discussion will be surrounding zombies, wolves, and the elements. First off, zombies. Zombies have changed a lot in Point Six One. Previously, you didn't even need a melee weapon to deal with them. Just stop, punch them in the face a few times, and they'll die. But not anymore. There are hundreds, if not thousands, more zombies roaming around Chinaris now in pretty much every village and small town. As a new survivor, it should be your first goal to get a melee weapon that you feel comfortable with and lots of food because you're going to need it to stay energized and hydrated often to regain all the blood you lose while fighting. If you want to loot, you're going to be fighting them. It's almost unavoidable now. Zombies will now push your player every time they hit you, making for a frustrating experience at times. Obviously, it's not supposed to work that way, but the consequences is much tougher and more difficult zombie encounters, especially if you're playing it alone. I personally like the challenge, but I'm expecting them to remove the ice skating push and add an actual push animation, and I'd be a little bit more okay with it. Zombies also feel like they do more damage, have a higher chance to cause bleeding, and do more shock damage per hit, causing you to get knocked out faster than before. I'm not 100% sure if this is a change that is made in this patch or previous patches that's finally starting to show itself because zombies are more challenging. And there's more of them. Either way, be prepared and don't fight zombies if you're even slightly grayscale. They'll knock you out. When you fire your weapon, you'll attract a horde of zombies, especially in military bases in big towns like Starry. Sometimes you'll need to fire your gun, but just be prepared to deal with 12 or more zombies at times. Suppressors now have immense value in DayZ because they function properly versus zombies, so be prepared to create bottle suppressors and key pistol suppressors whenever you find them. Getting a suppressed sidearm is now very critical to the game and it will make your life a lot easier. The long wooden stick is still effective against zombies, but like the other melee weapons, as soon as you get pushed around, it can be hard to land the shots. Don't bother with your fists, rocks, or brass knuckles in this patch unless they fix zombie collision. Most of the time, you won't even be able to get close enough to land a hit if you're up against more than one zombie. Either way, I'm excited to see how well the zombie threat has been going for this patch. I'd love to see them fix the zombie collision slash ice skating, as that's what I've been calling it, and I would love to see 10-15 to 15 zombies spawning in helicopter crashes just like in the mod. Next topic, wolves. Before I continue, I've made an entire video showcasing a wolf attack, and I highly recommend that you go watch that. Although I was extremely impressed with how the wolves looked and for their animations, feel, and noises, and also how they pathed around the map, I was let down with the amount of damage that the wolves did per hit. I feel the developers could increase the movement speed of the wolves slightly and the damage to add the oh shit moment when you find them. Survivors have been reporting that you can actually just run away from packs of wolves and even gather multiple packs together and travel around Chinaros with your own wolf pack, which is hilarious but obviously not intended. I love the presence of wolves and wildlife and would love to see more and we know that bears are coming down the road. Lastly, let's talk about the environment. If you play .61 and have been unfortunate enough to get stuck in the rain, I feel your pain. Hypothermia is a massive threat in .61, so make sure that you pack your rain jacket, a few heat packs, and maybe ditch your TTS KO jacket for a Gorka jacket for all you military players. I don't have much experience dealing with hypothermia, but I can tell you that when Krom and I were stuck in the airfield in a rainstorm, we were forced to retreat and build a fire as soon as possible, and Krom barely survived. We are forced to huddle down in a shed next to an improvised fire with our guns raised at the doors just to get our heat back. Heat from fireplaces doesn't seem to be working very well in Point Six One. I would like to see survivors heat up a little bit faster. People have been sitting next to a fire for up to 30 minutes before any noticeable changes. It forces you to completely remove yourself from the game for a little while, which is nice but it needs to be toned down a little bit. You don't die IRL for being out in the rain for more than 15 minutes, but obviously without the proper gear for extended period of time like hours, you can actually start to die of course of hypothermia. PVE has never been stronger in DayZ, and we're finally starting to see zombies move towards where the community has been wanting them to go. Additional threats like wolves help immerse survivors in the wilderness, and the weather can kick your ass faster than the players can if you're not prepared. For any DayZ enthusiast, this is an exciting time, and we're finally seeing the game that we've been wanting slowly come to light. Thank you guys as always for watching my videos. If you guys want to subscribe for more Daisy content, you can do so by hitting the subscription button below the channel. You guys can also check out my daily live streams Monday through Saturday at 8.30 a.m. and Sundays at noon. This Sunday, we're doing a Daisy giveaway on the channel, so make sure that you guys check that out, buy some tickets, and hopefully you'll get a chance to win. 
See you guys next time for some more DayZ.